In this video, I'll sketch a building, correct the two-point perspective, and then render the drawing. In the slides, I go through this process a little more thoroughly. Here, I've got a sketch, and I'm starting to get rid of lines that don't make sense anymore. And I'll sketch a bit more and then go back and draw the building from life again. I drew this sketch from observation, but I do know how perspective works. So as I was drawing, I was building the perspective in my imagination. And here what I'm doing is actually trying to draw lines that go to the vanishing points. And here I'm fixing the roof. This changes a few times. Like most of the drawing, actually. Here I am, back in front of the building, correcting the proportions of my perspective layout. I have vanishing points now, and I'm going to try and catch the proportions of things and fix anything that looks off. So I'm really drawing from observation as much as using a perspective layout. This is what my really messy sketch has turned into. I am actually drawing vertical lines vertical here, and if you don't have a T-square and a triangle, you can just eyeball things. In fact, that's what I'm going to do next. I actually um, don't draw all the way to the vanishing point on the right-hand side. It's off my drawing table. So I'm drawing the top of a window here, and I'm just eyeballing it against the roof line, and I'm referencing the ground as well. There are two windows on either side of the building that are the same, so I can draw them both at the same time. Here I'm filling in some detail using reference photo on my computer. If I didn't have reference photos, I'd be kind of stuck because I'm drawing at night. Most of the work that I do for this course seems to be at night, so you have to take advantage of the technology that you have. I'm working within the larger framework that I have already established. So I'm working from the big picture, the outsides of the drawing, down to the finer details. Don't start with the small things first or else you'll find them all out of proportion to the overall drawing. I moved the tree back and forth in this drawing and I realized that if I put it in front of the building I'd actually have to start drawing the tree first so I'm going to figure out where the tree goes and then I'm ready to start drawing. Although there is a framework established here my whole drawing is freehand. It's really important that you understand that the framework is just to guide where you put tones and values and textures. I'm trying to make this accurate representation of the building, and that's not an important requirement actually in your project. I think it's important that you figure out how two-point perspective works. You don't have to do it this way. There's some foreshortening in this building, and I keep moving this window back and forth to try and figure out where it's supposed to be. It's a good idea to just feel free to erase. Once I start adding values, I'm really reluctant to change them, so I want to get this part as close as I can. This is a scrap piece of the same kind of paper I'm using for my drawing, and what I'm doing is experimenting with how I'm going to cover some values and textures and which pencils I'm going to use. This drawing is essentially done with a soft pencil and a hard pencil. At some point, I just start drawing, and it always feels like I'm starting another drawing almost, but the idea is you just got to go for it. So here I'm starting to do some of the tree. Because it's in front of the building, I really have to figure this part out first. I try and put a clean piece of paper underneath my hand as I'm drawing. This way it helps to prevent things from smudging. I do like drawing, and I'm not in a rush, I'm not in a hurry to finish what I've started. It takes away all the enjoyment if you feel like you're under pressure or you're going to mess up somehow, so you just have to relax. Now that I have some of the tree drawn, I can start doing the building behind it. I'm trying to draw this very accurately, and 
I think that slows me down a little bit, but I enjoy the process of trying to make something approximate what it is in real life on a piece of paper. I think I would rely less on line if I were drawing this again. Part of it may be that I was trying to make sure that you could see what I was doing while I was making the slides and making this film. The drawing starts off with mid-value textures. As I go, I add some more details. And the paper is always spinning on my table because I find it easier to draw this way. Unlike previous videos, I didn't speed any of this up. This is all how fast I draw. And I think it's important for you to see that it does take time to add detail. And this is what makes the drawing have some life. So I don't mind doing this. You might wonder, what's the most important part? Getting a perspective drawing done or getting a drawing done? And I think it's all the same thing. Without a good two-point perspective, I wouldn't have anything worth spending this much time on. So the goal of your project is actually to make a really good drawing using perspective to guide you. You've seen me using a small eraser that you don't have, and my suggestion would be to just cut the pink eraser so it has a sharp corner. I'm also using a mechanical pencil just so I don't have to stop and sharpen it. This pencil has a soft lead in it that I have sanded off so it's got a chisel point, and I can draw broad lines this way. If I roll the pencil up the other way, I can use the sharp corner of it. It's hard for you to see me doing that, but I'm flipping the pencil back and forth. Again, notice that I have my hand on a clean piece of paper to prevent smudges. This kind of drawing is built up from lots and lots of small marks made with the end of a pencil. And I try very hard to make all the marks interesting and varied. If you just move the pencil around, it's not interesting. You have to actually pay attention to what you're doing and keep aware of the fact that your job is to make every mark matter somehow. The camera isn't picking up some of the very light values that I'm putting down. You can kind of only see the mid-tones and the darker values. It's important to put context in. The building that I'm drawing is real and it exists in a real place, so I have to draw the place that it exists. Some of this is simplified or made up, but I have to make it look like it's in a convincing world. So you should too. Don't just draw an object that's floating in space. Put the world in around it. I've really enjoyed getting off the computer for a while and doing something real as well. It feels like I could spend the next hour drawing this tree, but I'm going to just simplify and know when to quit. The perspective drawing guide I made for you will help you with the perspective. This video is mostly just to show you how I could use linear perspective to frame my drawing and then render it. I hope this inspires you a little bit to get outside and find something interesting to draw for yourself.